The structure out there behind me is uh, what we call an, an F-block structure, but it demonstrates the machine being able to lay in all the required configurations and being able to nest internal blocks with external blocks. This is not something that we do every day on every, on every building site. It's just something that we do uh, as part of our test program. The speeds of the machine at the moment are somewhere around about between 45 and 55 seconds uh, per laying motion. And of course that's still in test mode. We'll continue running the machine uh, in that uh, test mode speed for some time. Uh, and as we optimise and improve the machine in the coming months, uh, our intended goal is uh, three or four times that laying rate. Part of, the, uh, part of the outdoor build test that we're doing is to understand the uh, operational environment boundaries uh, of the machine. So in the middle of the summer here in Perth at the moment, uh, it's very warm. So we're getting a good indication now of what the upper limits of the machine actually uh, look like. Uh, but of course, we're yet to test the machine in, uh, in and through the winter months. That's in front of us. Uh, we're quite confident that everything will be okay in that regard. But um, as part of FBR's uh, program of uh, constant improvement, uh, this will be information that we will gather and, uh, and, and feed into the development team and uh, that will allow us to uh, improve the machines uh, further over time. So this is the first time we've laid the F structure and laid blocks outdoors yep. using the hydrogen and its existing form. Yeah, so obviously in any product development cycle, it's all about pushing the machine to the limit or the product to the limit. That's always gonna come up with these challenges. That's the whole point. We wanna actually be able to uh, take it absolutely to its performance uh, uh, limits, test it, break it, understand why it broke, do the proper root cause analysis, uh, understand what those fixes need to be, dial those fixes in, then retest it, learn from that, and it continuously improves. This machine here has been designed and built over the last two years. We've got two of them. We've done internal testing, we've done internal building. Now we're bringing that testing program outside, as you can see. Once we complete this house structure, we're going to learn a, a whole bunch of new things and that will be fed back into the development process and the, and the team. And Mark will take that information and from there, we'll continue to optimize and uh, increase the performance levels of the machine. The machine itself, which we're all very proud of, uh, given that's the first time anyone in the world's ever built a machine like this, uh, has actually exceeded our expectations. And the, the quality and the, the engineering that's gone into bringing this machine to life and as you can see it is alive it's part of our family now and Mark and his team have been able to bring the intelligence into the organization that we need to now contemplate making many thousands of these machines and getting them operating around the world yeah, I think it's fascinating the point he, he talks about it building a relationship you know the last 12 to 18 months we've actually been spending a lot of time with Hadrian and uh, we've learned a lot about the machine it's actually got a character of its own and as you can sort of experience there's a lot of noises going on they become familiar noises there's some unfamiliar noises at certain points that's when the engineers stand to attention uh, but generally we're actually getting to know the machine we're getting to know how it operates we're getting to know how the layhead places the block every time in a certain sequence uh, which is all predetermined uh, and as soon as we start to go off course that's when we start to watch very closely so we can optimise it going for the next block placement. Um, in terms of uh, obviously the machine itself has been designed with modularity in mind and that actually presents itself with a great opportunity to break the design and the manufacture of that down into uh, sub-modules that gives us a really agile and flexible footprint going forward for wherever we decide to manufacture or contract manufacture these uh, machines in the future, anywhere in the world. We're able to break it up a bit like the Apple and Dyson model where you actually break the product down into different key areas, get them separately manufactured and then we can maintain the IP of actually assembling the parts together, control that IP internally within FBR and then make sure that we put only FBR software onto the machines and only FBR employees operate the machine. When I see the machine performing like this, uh, you know, we've, we've designed that little structure there from a CAD model, we feed it into the machine. It understands where all those blocks need to be situated in space. No one's touched a block all the way through this process. 
and when you see it able to position a piece of the wall system in exactly the right spot it's a thing of beauty and that tells me that there's not a structure in the world that we will not be able to build with this machine precision